Hello? Yeah, hi, how are you doing? It's really good to hear from you. Um, hey, I am just about ready to get, um, to make a video and to read some stories. So can you hold on for just one second and then we'll get back to our call. All right, all right, great, thanks. Hey kids, how are you doing? So glad you came back to join us for another story today. You know, I've been wondering, have you ever lost something that you just can't find? You know, for me, it's normally my glasses or my phone. I never know where they are. In fact, I've been trying to find my glasses for some time now, and I still really have no idea where they are. So if you happen to see them, please let me know, okay? Today's story is about someone who's lost something as well, and it's called Joe Giant's Missing Boot. We're gonna find out if he ever really finds his boot and the lessons he learns along the way. Hey, now I can't find my phone either. Do you know where it's at? Joe Giant's Missing Boot, a Mother Gooseville story by Tony Goff. Once upon a time, Joe Giant and his wife Tilda moved to Mother Gooseville. Isn't this wonderful, said Tilda. Old King Cole's castle is just down the street. And wasn't that little Bo Peep we saw crossing the meadow yesterday? It's so exciting to think we'll all soon be friends. Early next morning, Tilda brought Joe his morning cup of tea. Time to get up, she shouted in his ear. Joe dressed in a flash, but when he went to pull on his boots, only one could be found. You must have lost it on the move, said Tilda. Go look for it after breakfast. So Joe ate his breakfast and hopped off down the road to find his boot. Try not to step on anyone, Tilda called after him. I do want to make friends here. Joe walked as carefully as a giant can in a land meant for smaller people. Soon he came over a hill. There was Peter Peter tending his crops of pumpkins. Hello, said Joe. Have you seen my boot? Your boot? bellowed Peter Peter. My wife left me this morning because I did not have a house. Then you came over the hill and scared the daylights out of me? And now you're squashing all my pumpkins. Do you think I care about your boot? Oh dear, said Joe. This is no way to make friends. Joe felt terrible and his sock was all sticky with pumpkin juice as well. He couldn't do anything for Peter Peter, but at least he could wash his sock. So Joe trudged off down the road to the sea. I'll just have a little swim while my sock dries, he thought. And he plunged into the water. When he came up for air, he felt a small, hard bump on his head. Now what was that? Joe wondered. That was the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. You sank our tub, you clumsy, they shouted. Oh dear, said Joe. This is certainly not my day for making friends, and all I wanted was to find my boot. Did you say boot? asked the butcher. How extraordinary. I've just seen a giant boot. It's right over that hill. Joe thanked the butcher kindly and hopped on up the hill. There stood his missing boot all right, but not the way he remembered it. Now it had a roof and two chimneys and little windows cut into it and even a door. What an impossible neighborhood for making friends, Joe thought as he stumped over the hill. Fee! Fi, fo, foot, he rode. Who's living in my boot? The ground shook like an earthquake. Then the door of the boot opened and out poured more children 
than Joe could count. With them came an angry old woman. What do you mean by frightening my children? She shouted. What do you mean by living in my boot? Joe shouted back. At that, the old woman began to cry. <laughs> I've got so many children, I don't know what to do, she sobbed. I was very pleased to find your boot, but even that's not big enough. <laughs> oh, what shall I do now? <laughs> Joe felt terrible. So far, he had squashed Peter Peter's pumpkins, ruined the day for three men in a tub, and now, now he was going to take back this old woman's home. It was getting to be too much for one morning, and he certainly wasn't making any friends. Then, suddenly, Joe had an idea. I know, he shouted. You can have my other boot as well. Then there will be enough room for everyone. Needless to say, the old woman was delighted, and so were her children. We must give you something, she said. How about this giant pumpkin I've been growing in a tub? Why, thank you, said Joe. I know just what to do with it. Joe hurried back to the beach where the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker were sitting sadly on the ground. He gave them the tub. It's perfect, they said, and they jumped in it at once. Thank you, Joe. You're a friend indeed. Then he took the giant pumpkin to Peter Peter. Could you and your wife make a house out of this? He asked. <gasps> that should keep us very well, said Peter Peter and his wife. Joe hurried home, eager to tell Tilda all about his new friends. But he only got through half of his tail. What? Tilda burst out. Then, you trampled Peter Peter's pumpkins and upset three men in a tub? Is there any way to make friends? But there's more, said Joe. I won't hear another word, said Tilda. I'm so embarrassed, just go upstairs and change those filthy socks. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was the old woman who lived in Joe's shoes. I had to come and tell you what a wonderful husband you have, my dear, she said. And she told Tilda everything Joe had done that day. Now goodbye, said the old woman. I'm sure we're going to be great friends. What a mistake Tilda had made. She knew just how to make up. She went straight to the kitchen and fixed Joe's favorite meal. A huge plate of spaghetti with two giant slabs of cheese toast. You great, big, wonderful giant, Tilda said as she carried in the plate. The old woman has explained everything. I'm sorry I didn't let you finish. And the two of them sat happily together while Joe slurped his spaghetti, smiling at the thought of all his new friends. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed our story today, and I'm so glad that Joe found his missing boot. Look, I even found my glasses, but I still can't find that phone of mine. So if you happen to see it, please make sure to give me a call. Join us again on Friday to hear a brand new story.